Good morning, everyone. Glad you're here today. It's good to see everyone. See a few faces that I've missed, and I'm glad you're here. And I hope you've come to receive from the Lord, to bless him with our worship. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord, as open vessels before you. Lord, fill us up. Let it overflow in this place. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just feed us this morning. Lord, we need more of you each and every day, and we seek you each and every day, and we want your power to work within us, Lord, to bubble out from us, Lord, wherever we go that we speak the name of Jesus and we call forth your power and your glory and your healings, Lord Jesus, and we praise you, Lord, wherever we go, let people see you in us as we worship you. And we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, you've done so much for us, and we are going to sing about it. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me, oh, just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me, oh, just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, he has done something in your life. Shout to him. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me all just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Satan, you are a liar. You 
Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. You have done so much for us. Hallelujah. Praise you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Yes. I'm coming with a heart of worship. I'm bringing in a brand new song. I'm ready to see the unthinkable. I'm ready for a miracle. Hearts praying for a fresh encounter. Souls looking to the living God. I'm ready for a real revival. Oh, Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, fall in this place, in our hearts. Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, come. Oh, Holy Spirit, come. We're on the edge of a new beginning. God, we know we have so much more. We're looking to a new horizon. We're praying for the rain to pour. And overflowing of true redemption. And overflowing of your tears. We're ready for real revival. Oh, Holy Spirit, come in a sun like a fire. Holy Spirit, fall in this place. Fill our hearts. Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, come.
Lord, we reach out to you, we praise you. We sing our hallelujahs to you, Lord. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Almighty God, move in this place as we worship you. Lord, as we open our hearts to you, fill us, Lord Jesus, overflowing. Lord, we seek you, Lord, in every need we have, we give it to you today. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you begin to speak to our hearts, Lord, and show us things, Lord, that may not be just right. Father, we give those things to you. We confess those things to you this morning. Begin to purify. Begin to change us, Lord Jesus. As we look to you, Lord, for deliverance. As we look to you, Lord, for healing. As we look to you, Lord, for salvation. And Lord, I pray any here today that may not know you as their Lord and Savior. Oh, Holy Spirit, that you would begin to draw their hearts to you. It may not make sense. It may not be any understanding there whatsoever. But Lord, we just know that you are drawing us and you will make the changes in us that need to be changed. If we, Lord, just submit to you this morning, just give it all to you. Lay our burdens, our struggles at the altar. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. in this place. I am speaking clearly. Listen intently, for I, the Lord, say that I am speaking to you. La rocuta la vita da parte pur sarini rocoli ramacascende.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
you, Lord. Lord, you are mighty. Hallelujah. Oh, give him praise. Give him glory this morning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us, as we forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come, Father, let your kingdom come. Holy, holy. Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come, holy, holy. Father, let your will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours, forever and ever. The kingdom is yours. Oh, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours, all yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours, forever and ever. The kingdom is yours, Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, let it be done. Right here in my heart, here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, let it be done. Right here in my heart, here in my heart. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Hallelujah. 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 Is that your prayer today? Hallelujah. His will be done. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Praise the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, once again, it's a nice, crisp winter day. The good news is I didn't shovel snow again. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good to us, isn't he? Hallelujah. I want to welcome all the saints here today and, and the saints that are joining us online. We are so thrilled you're here and watching with us. And even more excited than that, we've gathered together in this place with thanksgiving and hope in our hearts because we're here to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe this with my whole heart. He's received our praise. He's received our worship. Now I'm anticipating and expecting God to do something great through the message. I better get a bigger bang man on that. Amen. Amen. God is awesome, isn't he? Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to continue the series we're in, the Lord's Prayer. Why do we even need to pray at all? And the message in this, this week is this. What's the big deal about our daily bread? Yeah. Amen? Amen? What I have discovered, and I know you have discovered too, is that God's Word is still relevant to us today. 
I'm amazed at all the naysayers that say, you know, the Word of God is just a bunch of myths. It's a bunch of fairy tales written by a bunch of out-of-touch old people and has no relevance today. I want to tell you, that is simply a lie from the pits of hell. God's Word is still very relevant to us today because it's God's perfect, inspired Word. It's infallible, and it changes not. His Word's still for us today. Amen? And through this prayer that Jesus has been teaching here, he's going to help, help, help us through this prayer to pray effectively. How many want to pray, pray effectively? I think each and every one of us want to pray effectively. And we're looking at here at this portion of Scripture today. It says, you know, our daily bread. But before I get there, I just want us to understand a truth here today. Is that you and I do not need to walk in fear and worry about our daily bread. How many agree with me? Yeah. And, you know, and I understand why there's so much concern in our world today, in our nation especially, because of how things are going and how, what the future may look like. And if you're listening constantly to all of the naysayers, that looks like there's doom and gloom. And give you an example here. Today, the United States of America, our government has borrowed over $31 trillion. Can anyone begin to comprehend what $31 trillion is? Anyone comprehend that? Can anyone comprehend what $1 trillion is? Well, I'm going to try to help us out a little bit here this morning. A trillion dollars is a one with 12 zeros behind it. I don't know about you. I get excited when I got a one with three zeros behind it. Amen? And, and so let, let's try to get in our heads here just for a moment what a trillion dollars is. And, and, and just b imagine with me. On the day that Jesus was born 2023, 2023 years ago, you started a business in Jerusalem. And you were a lousy business person. And your business lost $1 million a day. How many think that's a problem? Well, between the birth of Jesus Christ and today, if you lost $1 million a day over the 2,023 years, you would still not hit a trillion dollars. In order to hit a trillion dollars, you'd have to add another 700 years of losing a million dollars a day. In other words, in the year 2723, you would have lost one trillion dollars. And here's the great news. You and I have to pay it back. So that means in the United States of America, every person who's alive today has breath in their body. You owe the government nine hundred and ninety-five thousand dollars. Little reason for concern? Because where do they get that? Raising your taxes, and then you add. What's going on in our economy right now? How many have discovered everything, the price is going down? What have you discovered? Everything has gone sky high. It's gone crazy. Inflation's everywhere. You go buy a dozen eggs. You got to mortgage the house. I mean, it's just crazy type inflation. Fuel prices, gas prices, electric prices, and that word recession... Now, is it any wonder that there is so much concern and fear and worry and anxiousness and fearfulness in the lives of Americans today? And what's even, I believe, more frightening is that when Christians begin to grab a hold of these things and allow fear to begin to rule and reign in their lives at this moment and for the future. I want you to know today, saints of God, as the people of God. How many children of God do I have here? How many know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? 
It may look bleak, it may look gloomy, it may look like there is no hope whatsoever, but I'm here to declare 100% that you and I do not have to walk in fear over all the things that are going on in our world today, because I have good news for you today. My God has already provided everything that you need before you ever ask for it. Can I get an amen there? And when we are going through hard and difficult situations, we can take the model prayer that our Father gave to Jesus gave to us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And what? And give us this day our daily bread. And here's what I believe the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to see through the power of the Holy Spirit here is this. As long as you and I are plugged into God, who are plugged into his power, hallelujah, I do not have to live in fear of what's going on in our land today because I know this as a fact. My God will give me my daily bread. Amen? Amen? Now, when I say our daily bread, you know we're talking about food here, okay, and it's those kind of things, but, but I want you to know it's more than just food. Our daily bread, I believe, includes every area of our life. You know, bread, obviously, is one of the universal staples of the world. Every culture that you go to, they have their own kind of bread. French bread, Italian bread, and all kinds of bread. Everywhere you go, they have bread. Everyone know what I'm talking about. How many remember when you, when you got store-bought bread, it was a treat? And now we get homemade bread, that's a treat, you know? Every culture has bread. It's a staple for all, almost every culture. And I believe it's probably one of the obvious, obvious, obvious staples around the world. And it's probably one of the oldest ones. And again, Jesus is saying this to us, not just for bread, but for all kinds of areas in our life. So I want to look at this morning is this, what bread represents in the Bible. How many want to hear what bread represents in the Bible? The first thing that bread represents is this, and it's just the obvious one. Bread represents the necessities of life. Say necessities. My God will give me the necessities I need to live. How many of you think that's true today? Amen. You know what? I need water to live. My God will supply it. I need air to breathe. My God supply in the air, isn't he? The necessities. How many realize you believe this or not? We need sunshine. We need that vitamin D. My God has provided the sunshine, amen? And then my God has provided nourishment for my body. Whatever I need, I need shelter. My God has provided shelter. Whatever our necessities are for our physical bodies, guess what? My God will supply that need. Hallelujah. God has never created anything without providing for the needs of what he has created to survive. Now think about this for a moment. You got a bird flying in the air up there. What did God provide for that bird? He provided worms and bugs and grain and berries. Worms. I'm glad God provided me the bird. The bird can have all that other stuff, amen? But whatever God has created, he provides the things that is necessary for that to have life. Isn't God good? Psalms 104 and 27 says this, All creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with what? Good things. This portion of scripture here is giving us a, a view into the economy of God. You know, we're hearing a lot about the economy, but you know what economy I'm really concerned about? God's economy. Amen. Amen. My God is simply saying this I will supply it, but you have to gather it. Now, think about that for a moment. God's saying, I will supply it, but you have got to gather it. And here's something very, very important we have to understand here today. There's times that God simply gives it to us. How many like it when God just simply gives it to you? I like that. And you know what? As a grandpa, I love to simply give it to him. I'm talking gifts. <laughs> As a parent, how many remember bringing something home for your kid? You simply gave it to him. But what I have discovered, our God does that. 
But I also have discovered this. God supplies it. Then he asks for us to gather it. Amen? And you can't gather it by sitting on the couch. Complaining and whining and griping about not having it. Amen? Now, what do I mean that we have to gather it? Now, how many ever read the story of the Garden of Eden? Anyone ever read the story? Perfect 100% environment. Can I get an amen there? Thank you, Adam. But what did they have to do in the garden? They had to work. Oh, I said a dirty four-letter word in church. Didn't they? How many remember the story of God providing manna in the wilderness for the children of Israel? And when God provided the manna, what did they do? Sit on the couch and say, okay, God, give it to me. They had to go out. Uh-oh. I'm glad it went that way, not out that way. <laughs> they had to go out and what? Work. They had to go out and gather the manna. God provided. He's Jehovah Jireh, my provider, but he had to go out and gather the manna. You know, and then I remember the story about taxes being paid. I don't like paying my taxes, and I'm trying to convince myself it's just another opportunity to give. <laughs> I'm trying to convince myself of that. But God told him, go out. I'll provide your tax money. Go fishing. You know, I refuse to go fishing for tax money. How stupid is that? Now, isn't that how we would think? They go out and fish, and what did they catch? They had to go out and what? Fish. And guess what happened? They caught a fish, and they opened the fish's mouth, and what was there? A coin to pay their taxes. My God supplied. But they had to gather. Amen? And I'm thinking about another situation. The disciples are out on a fishing boat. And they have worked all night long. They have toiled all night long. And they went over and over and over. And what did they catch? Absolutely nothing. Nothing whatsoever. And they're coming back in despair and defeat. How are they going to feed their family? How are they going to feed their kids? How are they going to keep the boat up? How are they going to keep their nets together? We caught no fish. And all of a sudden, Jesus speaks up and to him and says, let down your net for a drought, or let down your net for a catch. And here's what hinders us from gathering. The disciples, you know what they did? They argued with the Lord. How dare you, us professional fishermen, you tell us how to fish. Jesus, it is the wrong time of day to catch fish. We have tried catching the fish there before, and guess what? There are no fish there. I refuse to do this. I will not do that. I refuse to do it whatsoever. We're the experts. And many times we don't harvest, we don't gather, because we make excuses why we can't do it when God says you can. And finally, praise God, they said, nevertheless, Lord, after all our excuses, all our complaining, all our griping, we'll let down our nets. And they let down their net, and what happened? They pulled in such a large cat, a, a group of fish that the nets began to break. They called for help because their boat was going to sink. God supplied, but they had to gather. And we live in a society that doesn't want to hear about gathering. We want to hear about the blessing. Now, I'll give you an example here in my own personal life. Believe it or not, I have been in places as a pastor where I have been in need. Does that surprise anyone? When I was first married, I had our first kid, I was making about $100 a week as a pastor. Guess what? Things were tough. And I said, God, 
I need to do something here. You need to help me here. And how did I get God's blessing? You ready for this? He got me a job at Pizza Hut. I was gathering God's blessing by working a part-time job at Pizza Hut. Took me years to ever eat Pizza Hut again. <laughs> Another way God helped me, we were in a situation and needed help. I said, God, we need help here. We need this bill made. We need to, to pay this bill. And I got a part-time janitor's job for 50 bucks a week. And I had someone say, why even bother for $50? Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Would you, bo would you bother for $2,600? Because $50 a week times 52 is, guess what? $2,600. God provided. Another time I got in a mess, and I, I again, was like, God, we need help here. And guess what? I, another thing I got, another janitor's part-time job, making $75 a week. Man, I got a raise. Added it along with the, what I was getting as pastor, got that raise, and I had again someone say, why are you bother for $75 a week? Well, how does $3,900 a year sound? Because $75 a week is $3,900. You see, God provided. I had to gather. Amen? Ain't God good, saints? Hallelujah. It's awful quiet. The lady with the cruise of oil. God supplied, Right? But what did she have to do? She had to pour the crews of oil. Think about Jesus when multiplying the fishes and the loaves for those who were hungry. What did the disciples have to do? God provided. The disciples had to organize. Then they had to break the bread up and pass it all around. And at the end, what they had to do? They had to gather the 12 baskets full. God provided. But we had to gather. Amen? Awful quiet. You see, saints of God, God's plan is for his people to W-O-R-K. And I want to take it a little bit deeper here. God expects us to have a work ethic that honors him and brings glory to him. Because God planned us to be people who would work. Give us this day our daily bread. And as we do our part, God's provided it all. Everything that you need, he's already provided for. But so we need to pray, Lord, give us our daily bread, but also, Lord, show me how to gather what you have provided. Amen? Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? And again, God will meet all your needs. It didn't say that God would meet all your greed. Amen? Hallelujah. Proverbs 14 and 23 says this. All hard work brings a what? How many like that? God gives us the ability to create wealth. But mere talk leads only to, what's that last word? Poverty. I'm going to put my paraphrase on here. All hard work brings profit, but mere excuses leads to poverty. Amen? Amen. Another version says it's this way, Proverbs 14 and 23, the message, hard work always pays off. Can I get an amen there? Amen. Mere talk puts no bread on the table. Amen? amen. Now, I can tell you from personal experiences and my own life how God has supernaturally provided Another way he had me provided for me many times was to sell things. Can you believe that? Look at some of the things I have at the house that's been sitting there for five years. <laughs> no one's looked at it in five years. And you know what he said? Sell it. I've seen God provide for me supernaturally through yard sales. It's crazy. 
<laughs> go and drive them down the road, and there's no signs up. All of a sudden, here's a house with something for sale. You, you pull in there, you get these great items, and you have no idea what they're worth. You get back and find out they're worth a whole lot. You take them to, the, take them to my shop, and one day they sell in one day. You tell me that's not God providing. You see, saints of God, when we're listening to what the Holy Spirit says to us, we will see that God will do great in my things. But guess who had to go to the yard sale? I had to walk up there and search through that stuff. I had to pick it up, clean it up, price it, take it back out there, and see what happens. I want to tell you, saints of God, I believe this with my whole, whole heart, that the children of God can have every one of their needs met when we understand God's already provided. Now, Lord, show me how to gather it. It's ours. It's ours. Amen? Hallelujah. The next thing bread represents in the Bible is this. Bread represents God's spiritual food, the Word of God. Now, I don't know about you. I like physical food. Anyone like physical food? But I, don't know, I want you to know I'm just not a physical person. I'm a spiritual person. And guess what my spiritual side needs? Soul food. Amen? Hallelujah. The Bible is our soul food. Amen? Amen? And, and, and saints, God wants us to, to have a, you know, a relationship with him, but he also wants us to learn to grow in his word spiritually. How many want to get to know God more? Well, you get to know God more by knowing God's word. The scripture says, steady to show yourself or prove unto God who workmen who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Saints of God, if you want to grow spiritually, you want to grow spiritually in power and anointing, you've got to have a diet of God's word. And when you get to God's word, he's already provided it. Amen? Amen. Now, Lord, show me how to gather it into my heart and into my soul. And how does God do that? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. But there's one thing I have learned about God's Word. I can't plug it in like that. But what do I have to do? Holy Spirit, teach me your truth. Show me your truth. Help me to understand your Word. Because the Holy Spirit is the teacher. And he illuminates God's Word to our lives. Can I get a big amen on there? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus is his word, amen? But we need spiritual bread to live spiritually, and that comes when we feed upon the word of God. Today, I am believing that you're feeding. I'm believing that. By faith, I believe you are feeding on the word of God today. I want to tell you, those who are in Sunday school class today, by faith, I have believed that you were fed in Sunday school. And I want to tell you, saints of God, you cannot ever get enough of the Word of God because you will never arrive with all the knowledge of God until you see Jesus face to face in all His glory. And until that time, we need a constant feeding on spiritual food. Bread is symbolic of the scriptures. Hallelujah. And saints of God, God wants to nourish our physical bodies, but he also wants to nourish our spiritual side of us also. We all need spiritual food in the land that we're living in today. Amen. 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 The next thing bread represents in the scripture is this. Bread represents God's family and fellowship. Now, we talked about physical food, spiritual food, but can I tell you something right now? We need relational food. We need people. Amen? Bread is a metaphor for the family of God. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. He also, the Bible also says it's not good for man to be alone. And God created a family. How many are saved today? How many know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? You are part of a family, the family of God. Hallelujah. You may not have a great family physical family around you, a natural family around you, but there's a family that should be great and powerful in your life. It is the family of God. Because I can tell you right now, the family of God is going to last for all eternity. And what God is saying is that we need to have relationships. Say relationships. We need relationships with one with another. One of the most dangerous things that can happen to a group of people and a group of Christians is they become lone rangers. They keep to themselves. And I'll have to be honest with you, that's easy for me to do. 
Don't smirk like that. I am a shy, backward person. I know you may not believe that, but I am by nature. I am the introvert. You look in the, the dictionary for introvert, there's my name. But guess what? That's not what God has for me. He wants relationships. Because when things get hard and things get diff difficult, you got a family you can call upon. You got someone there that can pray for with you. You got someone there that can help you. You got someone there that is with you at all, that can be with you at all times. And I look around this room right now and I know there's people in this room that are desperately needing fellowship. Say fellowship. And I want to encourage each and every one of us in this room today. If you'd someone in this church that you don't know, get to know them. Amen. amen. Get to know them. You ready for this? By name. Or even be a little braver. Some Sunday, you ready for this? Say, hey, we're going to go out for lunch after, after, sun, after, after Sunday service, after the Holy Spirit just fed us spiritually. Let's go out and fellowship together and have fellowship together. Go to the Mexican restaurant and, God forbid, go to McDonald's, whatever. <laughs> but start to get to know each other and start to have fellowship one with another because it builds a bond. Can I say amen? Amen. 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 And saints of God, the church ought to be the place where there is fellowship. The scripture talks about breaking bread together. And the idea of breaking bread together was having great fellowship and great food. We're going to have great fellowship and great food coming up here in about a month, I think, or so. And we're going to have a chili cook-off. And I'm going to challenge you. My chili will be the best. Come and prove me wrong. Amen. Old time Pentecostals, we ate at everything. There was a dinner everywhere you looked. There was dinner in fellowship. You know why? Because God wanted it that way. Acts 2 and 42 says this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. Now I want to stop there right there. They devoted themselves to what? The teaching of the apostle. They, devoted, they devoted themselves to the word of God. Now I think that I think that's pretty good. Okay. And to what? And to the breaking of bread and to what? Prayer. Prayer. I can tell you, saints, this is vitally important of meeting our daily needs is to have this kind of fellowship and not being lone rangers. Acts 2 and 46 says this. Every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts and they broke bread in their homes. Where did they break the bread together? Here's a novel idea, and I'm not, very, I'm not as good as I need to be about this either. We need to start inviting people to our homes. And yes, that means you'll have to clean the house first. I got the wife saying yes, and the husband saying no. <laughs> so we know who's going to do the cleaning there, don't we? Amen. Okay. And they ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Amen. Amen. And then if you look at the Old Testament, when they brought offerings, one of their offerings was this. They were to bring a basket full of bread. What was that for? Fellowship one with another. Amen? Amen. God is good. The next thing bread represents in the Bible is this. Bread represents Jesus and salvation. Jesus and salvation. Remember, Jesus said, I am the what? The bread of life. Uh, Doug, would you come back? And I need to ask a couple of my men to come, and we're going to serve communion right here. Need some help here. And do I have this mic on, Dianza? <laughs> Testing, one, two, three. Testing. I think we got it there. Okay. Amen? God is good. Now, here at Grace Point Church, we don't uh, practice a closed communion. You know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and you're right with God. Take a moment. Say, Lord, search me. Make sure you're right where you need to be with God. 
and we'll partake of this communion together. So hold the elements. Men, if you would go ahead and serve. You don't need to go to the balcony. I've got some up there already. Amen. Praise God. Jo Jesus chose these sacraments today, the bread, to represent his body. Now, who chose this? Jesus himself chose this. Jesus also chose this cup to represent the new covenant in his blood. And I need to get a Kleenex real quick. I couldn't find them up there, so Cheryl, thank you. So as these men are passing out these elements, let's just still our hearts before the Lord as Doug continues to play here. bread and the cup are just symbolic of Jesus' broken body and his shed blood. This is not the actual body of Jesus or the blood of Jesus. Some teach this what happens. It's not. As a matter of fact, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. And when he said that, he wasn't gone yet. So Jesus told us this is a remembrance of all that he has done. Luke Gospel, Luke 22 and 19, and Gary is going to come and ask the blessing on the bread here. I'm going to read the scripture. And after he does the blessing, then we'll partake of the bread together. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Let's eat. Pastor Terry is going to come and pray over the cup after I read the scripture here. Luke 22 and 20. In the same way after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. drink together. Hallelujah. Let's just praise the Lord for a second.
Hallelujah. Lord, we just give you glory and honor and praise, and we just magnify your name. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. Thank you for the new covenant. Thank you, Lord God, that you provided all that we need. Lord, for our bodies, for our minds, for our souls and our spirits. Lord Jesus, thank you for such a great gift of salvation. We praise you and give you glory and honor. Hallelujah. 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 God is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Doug. Hallelujah. Instant in season and out. It's like that. Amen. Leads me to our next point here. Learning to depend upon God to meet my or our daily needs. How many realize you have to learn this? It doesn't happen automatically because I say I'm a Christian. I've got to learn to do this. And how do I learn to do this? The first one's very easy. You ready for it? By faith. Amen? By faith. I must believe God will meet my needs when? How many believe that to be true today? I believe that to be true, saints of God. I believe it with my whole heart that we must believe, first of all, that God is and that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You know what? God's provided it already, but my part of gathering is, guess what? I've got to diligently seek him, and that's more than just mouthing I'm a Christian. I diligently seek his will. I, dil I dil diligently seek his presence. I diligently want to hear him from it in his word. I diligently seek after him by faith. And when I do that, I believe that God will meet my needs. Hebrews 11 and 6 says this, And without faith, it's impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he is a what? A rewarder of those, and this version says, earnestly seeks him. I like the King Jimmy there, diligently seeks him. I like that one better, but this is one I use anyway. So here's the simple thing, saints of God. i got to plug into God by faith. I believe the word of God by faith. I believe the power of prayer by faith. I believe my God will meet all my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus my Lord by faith. And I seek after him and trust and believe that he will meet my needs. Amen? Amen. Amen. The next way we learn how to depend upon God is this. I've got to get to the place where I see my God as my daily supplier. You say, oh, my job's my supplier. No, 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 your job is not your supplier. The reason you have that job is because God gave it to you, and that's how God's going to cause you to prosper. But your daily supplier is God Almighty, not Chrysler, not the airplane company, not the U.S. government, not your retirement plan. Your daily supplier is God Almighty. He may use those other things to help you reap what he has for you, but my God shall supply it all. Amen? What does God supply for us? Everything that we need daily. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now some of you are going, I don't see it. Start believing for it. Amen? Amen? Everything you see in this world, God made it. Everything that's outside of this world, God made it. All the spiritual things, everything God has created it. And because God has created it, he can use any part of it to bless his people to meet their daily needs. Amen? My God shall supply some of my needs. All my needs. According to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus my Lord. How much riches does my God have in glory? <laughs> I got news for you, more than 31 trillion Amen? He's got it all. And then the what? He can make more if he needs it. Amen? My God is the supplier of the air. Take a breath. God just supplied that for you. Amen? I, I, the light up here, God's supplying that. The light outside, God's supplying that. Amen? Everything that you see, our God has supplied it. He is my supplier. Amen. And not only is he my supplier, he is my supplier of good and perfect gifts. Amen? Amen? 
Everything that God has given to us is good and perfect. And when it comes down to the final analysis, none of us have earned any of it. It's all given to us by the grace and mercy of our gracious God. Amen? The next truth we have to understand and depend upon this is very similar. There is nothing I need that God cannot supply daily. Amen? Whatever the need is, God can supply it. Whether it's emotional, physical, spiritual healing, whatever it is. Because my God's got the supply, my God's got the resources, and my God's got the power to meet every need in my life. Philippians 4, 19 says this, and I record it all the time, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Remember, he supplies, and we start need to ask him, Lord, in the supply, how do I gather it? And he will reveal God's sources are unlimited, and I believe this to be true, saints. God lavishes his unlimited resources on his children daily. Amen? The next thing we have to trust and uh, to, to learn here is this. God wants to give me daily perfect gifts. He wants to. Say Amen. Amen. And here's what happens. We listen to the voice of Satan and says, God remembers all those things you've done wrong. Instead of God giving you good and perfect gifts, he's going to punish you for all these things that you have done in the past. Yes, they've been repented of, they've been turned away from, but he constantly reminds you of all those past failures over and over again. Ma, 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 ma. And that's where you need to rise up in the name and authority of Jesus and say, that may have been what I was in my past. I may have done those things in my past. But today, 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 my God wants to meet my daily needs with perfect gifts. Say amen. amen. Matthew 7, 9 through 11 says this. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake. Ooh. No. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? How many believe that to be true? Yes. It's true. I've got to believe that by faith. Amen? Hallelujah. So no matter what the need, God wants to give the good and perfect gift to us on a daily basis. Now I want to enter back into God's economy. Is that okay if I do that? The next way we learn to depend on God is this. I share the seed of the bread that God has given to me daily. What's that word? That most important word in that? Share. Now, how many have ever gone through a hard, difficult time, and all of a sudden you get the blessing, and what do you do with the blessing? My blessing. My blessing. I have had such a hard, hard time. I'm not giving up my blessing. Mm hmm. And, and, and am I speaking the truth? You know what God wants us to do with the blessing that we have received? Plant some seeds into His economy. And whatever I have been blessed with, I share with others. Amen? Trusting God, depending on what God means, sharing whatever he supplies for me to others around me in need. Amen? When God gives to us blessings, he wants us to share with others. When you get that paycheck, you ready for this? God wants you to share with the church. 
Amen. And notice in the Lord's Prayer, it was not give me this day my daily bread. Why was it that way? Because it's not about me and my at this point. It's give us this day our daily bread. And guess what God does? Those of us who got the blessing of the daily bread, we take some seed and give it to others. But here's what is so awesome. When we learn to trust God in this way with the bread that we have received, God takes it and he multiplies it over and over and over and over again. But let me say how you have to give it. You have to give it in love. Say in love. In love. You have to give it in love. Amen? You can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. They go together. Amen? Why does God want us to give? I thought he owned everything. You ever ask that question? Why does he want us to give in the first place? You ready for this? Because the Father wants you to be like him. He wants to look down at you and say, that, that young lady, that's my daughter. She's like me. In a good way, amen? That young man, he's just like me. And how is God? God is a giver. God always loves to give. And what God is saying to us then is that we need to learn to love and be like God and share from our daily bread. The next thing on that is simply he wants to learn to, wants to trust him. How many want to trust him today? Yes. Amen. And here's what we need to see here is this. God has blessed us so others through us can receive his blessings also. That's why he's done that. So God is looking for people in this world who say, Lord, use me. And I'll honor you with your daily bread and bless other people. 2 Corinthians 9 and 10 says this, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply, you ready for this? And increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. How many want increase? How many like that portion of scripture? What's the key? Sharing the bread, the seed of it, amen? 2 Corinthians 9 11 says this, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Supplying seed for the sowers. You know, one of the ways we can do that here at Grace Point Church is through our missions program. Amen. Amen. But I like that part, enriched in every way. How are you today? How are you today? Blessed. You're blessed. You're enriched in every way. And if you want more enrichment, start giving back the daily bread, the seeds of it Amen. to our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen? The next way we learn to depend on God is this. You ready for this? God is waiting for me to ask him for my daily bread. You ready for this? He wants you to ask him. What's the big deal about our daily bread? Why do we need to pray at all? Because God wants us to ask him for our daily bread. The scripture says you do not have because you do what? Don't ask. That, is, that means you have to write, ask in the right way. Everyone agree with me on that? But God wants us to ask him daily to meet whatever our needs are. Matthew 7, 7 through 8 says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Can I get an amen there? 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says this. This is the confidence. Say confidence. We 
have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, did you catch that part? According to his will, he what? Hears us, and we know that he hears us. Whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Amen? We're going to do a little different today. How many have a need in this place today? Raise your hand. You have a need. Whatever the need is, physically, emotional, spiritually, financial, whatever it is, you have a need. I want us, those who have needs, and it should be, I think, every one of us in this room, I want to call you forward right now. And we're going to gather around these altars, and we're going to ask God today for our daily bread. Whatever the need is, we're going to ask God today for our daily bread. Come. We're going to ask together. Everyone in this room, if you would, raise your hands toward heaven. Father, we come to you right now. In the name that's above all names. We call upon the mighty name of Jesus. And you taught us in your word, Lord God, to pray for our daily bread. For the daily needs in our lives. And today, Lord God, we're standing before you as your people. We're standing before you as your children. And Lord God, you see every need that's represented here right now. You see every need that's represented here right now. And Lord, we believe your word that there's nothing too hard. There's nothing too difficult. There's nothing that you cannot supply. And Lord Jesus, right now, I ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to begin to fall upon each and every person in this room. Right this very moment, Lord God, our hands are open to you. And Lord God, that you begin to meet every one of these needs according to your riches and glory. Lord God, we call those things that are not as though they are. We're believing you right now to perform your word as we reach out by faith. Lord, we receive these daily gifts right now. And Lord, I pray also, Lord, that you would give us wisdom and understanding. Lord God, you provided everything. Everything that we need has been provided for, Lord God. Now, Lord God, show us. Show us, Lord God, how to gather it, Lord God, how to bring it into our lives. Lord God, that those manifestations would take place. Lord God, for those who need physical healing today in their bodies, we call those right now, we call that cancer to be gone in the name of Jesus. We command his power to be loose. Every sickness, every disease, you have to be gone in the authority and the word of Jesus Christ right now because you are our healer. Lord God, you see the financial situations. Lord God, you know how to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that cannot even be contained. Lord God, we call those things right now into being, Lord God, that you're meeting every need right now. Every need's being met according to your riches and glory. Every need, every need, every need, Lord God. Every need right now. Oh, those who have been baptized in the Spirit begin to pray in the Spirit right now. Lord, those that need the baptism right now, Lord, baptize them with the Holy Spirit and fire right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, we're asking for that daily bread, Lord God. Holy, 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 holy. Emotional issues right now. Emotional issues right now. Gone in the name of Jesus. 
In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Lord God, we're going to reap, we're going to reap right now your word that says who the Son has set free is free indeed. Lord, we're, we're reaping that word right now. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Spiritual warfare things right now. They're being loose right now. You're being set free right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, it is called a machiarity, karama. Holy, 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray a prayer of agreement right now. Father, right now we come to you in the name of Jesus. You tell us in your word where two or three are gathered in your name that you're in our midst. You also tell us, Lord God, we'll hit you agreeing as touching anything according to your will and your plan. They shall have what they ask. And right now, Lord God, we're praying a prayer of agreement right now. With that person on each side of us, around us, Lord God. And we're believing together that strongholds are coming down. We're believing right now for the healing virtue of God to flow. We're believing for deliverance to take place. We're believing for freedom to flow right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, for those relational si si relation type situations, Lord God, we're believing for healing to come to those situations also, Lord God. And Lord Jesus, we're trusting and believing you right now. Praying together the effectual fervent prayers. Yes of a righteous man or a righteous woman availeth much. Thank you, Lord God. Lord God, right now, meet the needs of those people around us right now, our brothers and sisters and the fellowship that we're developing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, may this place be called a house of prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy.
peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over our spirits with fabulous bellows of love. I don't know if I got it right, but it was close. <laughs> The Lord is so good, isn't he? Amen, amen. God is so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Ghost and fire keeping us alive. Amen, amen. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us this day our daily bread. Thank you, Lord. There is so much truth in the model prayer that you gave to your disciples to teach them how to pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this church, every person here. Lord, mold us and mend us into a mighty family a mighty fellowship that loves you, that we share with one another all the blessings you have provided for each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you right now in advance for the testimonies that are coming of the mighty things that you have done today and will continue to do. Thank you, Jesus, for freedom in our minds and our spirit and our finances. Thank you, Lord God, for the privilege and honor to share the blessings you have given us with others so we can be more like you. Thank you for meeting the needs. In your precious name we pray. And all God's people who agreed said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? I want to continue to call the body here to prayer. I know the ladies are praying on Mondays, and I want to continue to remind us men to pray and fast on Mondays also, because God's going to do some great and mighty things, because we're asking him for this church, the church is daily bread also. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus' name.